Yo, what's going on, people? Check it out. We're back at it again, talking about the differences between a gospel walking shout bass line and a regular blues bass line. Let's go. So as you guys can see, I was playing a simple blues progression in the key of G using the Mixolydian scale with that flat seven. They're all dominant seven chords. So really quick, I want to talk about the similarities between the gospel and the blues bass line. And the differences are there are none, <laughs> except for the tempo. So you're going a little bit slower when you're playing a blues progression or blues bass line. You even see some uh, blues progressions that are sped up a little bit more, but in gospel, you have that praise breaker gospel shout bass line that everybody knows or whatever you want to call it, gospel chops, it doesn't matter, uh, the terminology. But that style of music is more up-tempo. You usually hear it maybe around 150, 155, 160 BPM, 165, even 170 sometimes. Uh, it's a little quick. But, a little quick for me, but anyway, that's the only difference. Trying to figure out or trying to create a walking bass line will be the same concept for either one. So a gospel walking shout bass line uses the same exact principles as a blues bass line. And just for an example, I'm gonna use the 1625 progression for each style of music. So 1625 in the key of G, one would be G, six would be E, two would be A, five would be D. And I'm just going based off of the scale degree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Back home to one. Okay, so that's how you would number them. So one, six, two, five progression. And I'll show you guys the differences between the two. Okay, so now here's the blues. So now you see the differences and more so the similarities between the two. I went off a little bit on the first one, got a little excited, but anyway, you got the same concept between the two, the one, the six, the two, and the five, back to the one. Okay, same exact progression, just different styles. The drums change or the beat change or the swing changes. Uh, so it's the same note, same concept. And I wanna go over how you create this and how you build this type of bass line too. Just over a one, six, two, five progression, just to be able to maneuver around it. And the most simplest way to do that, you start with the one, you got the six, you got the two, you got the five, back to the one. Now you wanna add some notes in there. It can either be chromatic notes or just passing notes. So what I would do is I will play the next note that I need to play, I will play a half step below that. So every single note gets that treatment. So if my first note is G, my next note should be E, I'm gonna play an E flat and I'm gonna play that E. So the E flat is on the upbeat. So one and two. So every single chord tone that's there, the one, the six, the two, the five, every single one of those chords in that progression is gonna be played on the downbeat. Okay, so you wanna play those root notes on the downbeat just to start off. You can you know, kind of go off and use some substitutions here and there, uh, but when you're starting to create a bass line, this is where you want to start. Okay, so we have one, Half step below the six, half step below the two. So A flat to A for the two. And then for the five, you can do D flat to D. Very simple. So all together, it'll be two, three, four. Get it? So very, very simple bass line. The same thing applies for the other style of bass line. So the same thing applies, you just have to reach that speed a little bit cleaner and a little bit quicker. So that's all it is, is just building up that speed as far as the blues 
and the gospel shout bass line. Uh, it's really no difference or no comparison other than speeding it up like I mentioned before. So don't get the two confused. Don't put the shout bass line up here on a pedestal. I know it feels good. I know it you know, sounds great. I know it's fun to play, but it's really not as hard or as difficult as some people make it seem to be. If you learn a walking bass line, that's why it's so crucial and so beneficial to learn a walking bass line because once you learn a walking bass line, you can put that and apply that to several different styles not seven, several different styles of music, uh, just like gospel walking bass. I know there's some progressions that are kind of crazy, but the same thing applies when you're creating a bass line like that. You can even use substitutions, but we'll go into that in another late, uh, another date, another late, another date. So we'll go into that a little bit later. But anyway, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. If you guys want to learn more about this, Bass Nation Academy is where it's at. I'll put a link here on the screen or in the description. Uh, but we have live classes. We have a bunch of courses. We got modes courses, bass courses, walking bass courses, um, bass courses, uh, chords courses, um, slap bass courses, um, ear training courses. I mean, everything. I can't even think of everything right now. But anyway, it's so much to offer there at Bass Nation Academy. Uh, DerekBennett.com. I'll put it in the description again. So strongly suggest that you check that out if you're looking to enhance your bass playing to that next level. And when you get there, uh, shoot me a message and let me know you're coming from YouTube. Always great to see my subscribers coming and transitioning over into the Academy. It's great to see. But anyway, make sure you know it's coming out clean, clear, and precise if I haven't said that already. And if you're not subscribed already, hit that red subscribe button. Make sure you're notified of every single video that's uploaded on this channel. Hit that notification button. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>